Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, What can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On most Sundays, we read the Gospel lectionary reading for the day, and we hear Jesus commanding us or challenging us or encouraging us to live in a particular way. He says, there was this Samaritan going down the road. And we know the story of how the Samaritan saw someone in need and took care of that need. Or he says... I want to tell you about a golden rule. I want you to treat other people the way you want to be treated. Or he says, don't even think about trying to pull the speck out of your neighbor's eye until you get rid of the log in your own eye. Or he says, don't close the door of your heart like the rich man who ignored the poor man at his gate. Most Sundays, Jesus wants to tell us a certain way to live. However, in this morning's two passages, or two parables, Jesus doesn't instruct us how to live. No moral teaching here today. Instead, he describes for us the kingdom of God, how it spreads, and how it can grow beyond all comprehension. When Jesus described the kingdom of God, he generally talked about this life, not the next life. The kingdom, according to Jesus, is when justice and mercy and peace are present in the world. And that's precisely the hope we express every time we say the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're praying, may our world become the beautiful and life-enriching place that God has always dreamed for it to become. Yet, how that kingdom takes root, how it spreads, what impact it has on us, and how we can spot it and engage it are not easily understood. So, Jesus told stories. Two back-to-back -back parables this morning about seeds, and they pull back the curtain to reveal some of the prominent characteristics of the kingdom. Now, to help us decipher these two parables, it will be best if we slip into the dusty sandals of those first disciples 
and try to imagine their limited view of the world. They were modest in number, and none of them held an influential position. They were Jews whose homeland was occupied by the greatest military power the world had ever seen. The Romans controlled their lives. They did it through fear and intimidation and through a tax system that just broke their backs and kept them subservient. When they gazed at their world, when they considered the current conditions of life, it must have been stifling. Just to rise out of bed each morning and do what it took to survive required a tenacious spirit. To dream about a better day seemed absurd. There weren't going to be any better days. The die was cast. So Jesus told parables to burst open their tunnel vision and to expand their horizon. In our first parable, Jesus says there is an unseen power at work in the world. He says to anyone who will listen, the kingdom of God is as if someone should scatter seeds on the ground and then just go to bed. Get up, go to bed, get up, go to bed. And while you're doing this, while you're doing your daily living, the sprout begins to emerge. It grows. Don't know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe at once, he goes out and reaps the harvest. There's an unseen power in the world that can turn a tiny seed into a plant or a bush or even a great tree. And even in our day, with our breadth of botanical knowledge about the processes of growth, it's still incredible to think how this minute seed could become something so great. Now, of course, his parable wasn't a biology lesson. The growth of seeds into a plant or a bush or a tree, it's a metaphor. Things from the disciples' everyday world, farming, sowing seeds, illustrated the fact that there's an unseen power in the world that spurs growth. While many look at the world and see it as it is, Jesus had a unique ability to look at the world and see it as it could be. Jesus taught that God is like someone who sows seeds of possibilities, casting them here and there of what can be. Those seeds that take root and germinate take a while. But if we do not discard them, they can evolve into something new. However, that invisible power can do a great deal more than simply broaden our perspective, more than help us envision new possibilities. It can help us weather the storms that blow into our lives. And some of you are embroiled in a tempest today. If you grieve the loss of a loved one, there is an invisible power in the world that can bring healing to your life and pave the way for joy to return. If you're in the midst of a nightmare, there's a power that can give you the courage to face it. If you're facing a severe test, there is a power in the world that can give you the strength to survive it. If you are assailed by temptation, 
There is a power in the world that can help you reject it. Now, how that power works is a mystery. But countless people have turned to God and discovered a force that helped them overcome what they thought would overwhelm them. On their own, they might not have made it. Even with friends and family supporting them, they might have been crushed. But God infused them with what they needed to weather the storm. Like the power that coaxes a small seed buried in the dark earth to sprout and become a plant, the liberating love of God can bring light out of darkness. Over the years, I have seen it so many times. Jesus wants to highlight another aspect of the kingdom. So a second parable follows quickly on the heels of the first. With what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It's like a mustard seed. When sown upon the ground, it's the smallest of all the seeds on earth. But when it's sown, it grows into a bush great enough for the birds of the air to make nests in its branches. This second parable about the kingdom claims that great things can come from very small beginnings. Great things can come from very small beginnings. Thank you. Do you know the story of Martha Berry? She was born in 1865 and grew up in Rome, Georgia. Her father was a very successful businessman and began to acquire a great amount of real estate. She was educated in her home by a governess and a tutor. She spent less than one year in a formal school. Now Martha's father was a devout Christian with a very generous heart. And as a teenager, she would ride horseback with him as he would go into nearby mountain areas where he'd visit with the poor landowners and the tenant farmers. He would often assist these families who were in need. And the seed of compassionate Christianity was planted in Martha's heart. One Sunday, when she was in her early 30s, three boys were crossing their land and she engaged them in a conversation. She found out that they were totally uneducated and they knew nothing about the Bible. It was a Sunday, so she invited them in and just started telling them some basic Bible stories. Well, they were enthralled. So she invited them to come back the next Sunday but to bring their brothers and sisters with them. Soon, whole families started filling this small log cabin that her father had built for Martha and her siblings when they were young to use as a playhouse. And as the group outgrew that cabin, she decided to have a building built on the 83 acres that her father had given to her. She found out about other deprived children a few miles away. She found an abandoned church near them, and she started a Sunday school in that building. She found another building at Mount Alto. She found another at Foster's Bend, and within a short amount of time, she had four Sunday schools going, and those Sunday schools quickly grew into day schools. Eventually, Martha decided that in order to have a truly profound impact on these kids' lives, she needed to have them stay at school. So she had a dormitory built. On January 13, 1902, she opened the Boys Industrial School, 
with five boarding students on land that she had. After the school was incorporated the very next year and had gotten a board of trustees, she deeded her 83 acres over to the school. Six years later, on Thanksgiving Day 1909, she opened the Martha Berry School for Girls. And the Berry Schools became models for vocational, agricultural, and mechanical schools throughout the world. People began coming to Rome, Georgia to see the model that she had that would help poor rural people get an education and be able to find a work life. Today, Barry College has the world's largest contiguous college campus. It spans more than 27,000 acres of meadows and woodlands and streams. There are 47 buildings on the main campus and it's become a highly regarded liberal arts private school. It first began as a two-year college, but only four years later she turned it into a four-year liberal arts college. Last year, the school provided a little over $36 million in tuition aid to its students. a mustard seed the size of the head of a pen can grow into an immense bush. Similarly, every great idea, every major project, every transforming movement began tiny, but somehow they caught hold and then grew to immense proportions. Well, the kingdom of God is like that. It began with a penniless young teacher who gathered a handful of followers around him during his brief lifetime. He commissioned them to go out and to start planting the seeds of God's love. They could not have possibly imagined how their humble actions in the shadows of the mighty pagan Roman Empire would lead one day to a faith that circles the entire globe and impacts millions of people's lives every day. It's truly astonishing.